Welcome to the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce, Your Business Matters program. Today, I'm fortunate to have with us one of the newer businesses that, is, that have moved into White Bear Lake over the past year. As you might have noticed that over the past uh, 12, 13 months in White Bear, we've seen a real resurgence of smaller uh, independent uh, businesses move into our community, which gives this area a real special dynamic that you won't find in other parts of the Twin Cities. And so today we have the owner of the Olive Branch Oil and Spice Company, mm -hmm. Bruce Boucher, and, and thank you so much for coming uh, for to our me. program today. So appreciate it very much. Uh, the first question I want to ask you, Bruce, is what, uh, tell me a little bit about your business. What is it? Sure, we're a specialty shop uh, that focuses on spices mm -hmm. and oils um, from all over the world. It's one of the things that uh, I thought White Bear would be a great place to bring to. Uh, we have a high quality of restaurants and high quality of, of stores here, and this is one that fits in very well with the community. So it's a good mix with what we have in our area right now, you think? Absolutely, absolutely. Good. Now, um, is this your first business venture? Uh, no, my wife and I have had several other businesses. She's a massage therapist, and we've had a business in downtown White Bear before in our same oh, location. Oh, okay. So. Wonderful. Uh, so you're familiar, familiar with the area then? Yes, I've been out here 18 years. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Now, um, where are you located in White Bear? We're on the shops of 5th and Banning. Okay. Uh, our address is 2202 5th Street, Suite 20. We're located right across the street from the post office. Okay, great. What I want to I want to ask you a few questions about uh, your your business and kind of what makes it unique. And I see that you brought a number of items here on our table. And why don't you explain a little bit about what uh, what they are? Sure. What we have is uh, a couple of containers that carry our bulk spices. Uh, I happen to have uh, over 130 different varieties of herbs, rubs, spices, seasonings. 70% um, are organic, so we really try to cater in towards um, product that mm -hmm. really isn't easily available. Uh, if I may, this, yes. this one here is a hickory smoked sea salt, and I'll let you get a little whiff of that. This is what I call a campfire Ooh, wow. in a jar. Yeah, it does. It, it, it smells like a campfire. It's wonderful. Right. And uh, among that, we carry 10 different sea salts, mm -hmm. and then this is one of my favorites. Now, this, this is, is a sea this is salt, then? That is a salt. Okay. It is well, a salt, and we carry uh, both sea-produced and mine salts um, that come throughout the world. We have Australian, Mediterranean, um, uh, salts from the Himalayans. Is, wow. And all of them are high in mineral, and they're really wonderful. This is what we call our sweet Tweety chicken rub. And that you has can see it, that's got a, a, a certain aroma to it. Yes. A little sweet and yep. spicy to it. It's a wonderful mix, and that's one of the 30 different types of rubs that I carry. Rubs. No, what, the, this isn't a salt. Then. That is not a salt. That is a rub. What is, what is the difference between, uh, what do you use a rub for? A rub would be used for either your oven or your grill. Uh, you simply pat it on or sprinkle it over, pat it down into the meat, and you let it marinate for a couple hours in the refrigerator. Okay. What a rub does is it seals in the juices of whatever meat you're using. And the wonderful thing about rubs, uh, when you cut into it, they flavor the meat. But when you cut into it also, the juices come pouring out. They're just wonderful, and it keeps it very Great. moist. And this would be used for all different types of You could use that on chicken, poultry. Any poultry at all would be wonderful okay. for that. Okay. And then the salt. You mentioned that you've got uh, how many different types of salts? We have 10 varieties of salts. 10 varieties of salts. Each one has a different, unique characteristic to it. Now, I, I, I mean, I grew up using one kind of salt, the one with the woman with the... Uh, Martin's Table Salt. Right, right, with <laughs> well, the umbrella. <laughs> yes. And, well, and, you know, I always had the impression that salt is salt. It's not. Um, and explain why that why my that perception isn't correct sure salt <clears throat> that is normal table salt is high in sodium and it's refined well isn't that what all salt is well is so certain salts are higher in minerals lower in sodium and they're oh. stronger in taste so you use less 
So it helps those people that are trying to watch their sodium content. And that's a lot. We have we take in way too much sodium we in do. this country. Yes. We do. And I carry a lot of my, my rubs that are salt free. Um, the reason being is people I want people to use their own salt in moderation. And hopefully they're using a, a high quality sea salt. So they use a lot less. It has a stronger flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And you keep your sodiums at a lower level. So the, the, this kind of salt then doesn't taste like typical um, Morton salt or no, whatever. I'm not trying to. Not. I'm not trying to go after one of the competition <laughs> here. You understand? But I mean, this is really a different, different type of product than it, a different. It really is. Um, and yeah. it gives it. And what can this do to enhance the flavor of food that, for example, something like your traditional table salt can't? The wonderful thing on, on like a smoked salt or any of the salts that we use, they can go into soups. Um, you just use less of it, like a hickory. Uh, smoked salt would be wonderful. Just sprinkled over steaks as you're grilling, just a little bit to oh, enhance okay. that smoke flavor right. to it. Or one of my favorites is a northern bean soup in the fall. Uh -huh. I love having that and adding a little smokiness to that, you know, yeah, without but, yeah, having yeah, to yeah, use a yeah. liquid, you know, a chemical smoke, which a lot of people yeah. do. I'd really encourage people to come in and, and uh, take a look at this. This is a very interesting uh, scent to this, uh, this salt. So. Well, it's all about the freshness. You know, we we all have what I call legacy spices in our cupboard. Mm -hmm. You know, um, spices that have been handed down or spices we've had in there for years and mm -hmm. people get afraid of, of tossing them out because they put an investment in it. Sure. The way that we sell our spices is to sell it in a, in a plastic packet. We sell it by bulk. So you can buy just what you need to have. You don't have mm -hmm. to take in, and uh, buy too much. A yep. little bit of that salt goes a very long way, and Great. it keeps it fresh. And then again, you have nine different types that uh, we go. Have, we have ten different types of ten salt. Times. Nine yeah, different yeah. types of peppercorns. I have 130 in total right now, and it's growing. Our selection just keeps growing because as we go seasonally, we bring in things. I have cinnamon from Saigon, which is a wonderful cinnamon. It's got 5% cinnamon oil in it, and it's considered one of the best cinnamons you can buy. Uh, we have fresh lavender. Restaurants in the in the area are using our lavender for their salads. Oh, they are oh, like yes. re like local restaurants in White Bear Lake. Local restaurants in White Bear Lake use our product. They come on in and they buy our product daily, and wow. they're using our our. You'll see them in our in the restaurants around the area. You'll see that's our bottles. That's great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's a good uh, good uh, venue. That speaks very well for your your company. Now, tell me about a few of the other things on the table. I sure. see you've got some. Of, some of these things I we don't have. Know if they uh, these are pastas. We I brought in a uh, a vino rosso well, linguini, right? Oh. And a parsley garlic, and then our uh, black olive linguini. These are pastas that uh, we bring on in. We package under our label. We have recipes inside the wrappers with it. Uh, they're just absolutely wonderful flavored pastas that incredible. go well with our oils. That is really incredible. We and also have gluten-free pastas because there's a lot of our uh, large uh, portion of our society uh -huh. that, that needs to watch out for gluten-free. And all of our spices and pastas are gluten-free. Now, how many different kinds of uh, pastas do you have? We have, we have tw I should rephrase it, we have three pastas that are gluten-free. Okay. Uh, we have 12 that are flavored that are used with wheat, so they would have gluten Okay. In and you, and you uh, can use other products from your your company to help enhance the uh, the pasta then? Absolutely. We have, uh, which is wonderful, we have fresh breads baked uh, daily for us by uh, Chez Arnaud's, which is the French the, bakery. The French bakery up yes. in, in White Bear. They're wonderful. They're an absolute high quality, wonderful restaurant. Right. Uh, our spices can go with our pastas, and I even have a uh, I have an olive oil that is a sun-dried tomato Parmesan garlic. Oh, if you may give I that try that? Taste. Yeah, absolutely. Mm, wow, this is really, yeah, it's very. It's got a wonderful uh, garlic, you know. It does. Parmesan mixed to that. Yeah. And that we just pour straight over our pasta and use that as a side. It's very light. Uh, you're getting um, the right quality of carbo, or you're getting no carbohydrates and a right quality of, uh, of fat, which is the proper fats. You're not getting a high cholesterol to it. Oh, great, wonderful. And this is a, and you would use this type of, um, this you'd use this one then for the type of pasta that you mentioned. This would be like a go over pasta or dip it, go, dip it. it or? Could be dipped in bread. It can go over pasta. It, it's just a wonderful uh, 
It's a wonderful flavored olive oil. And one, what is it called again? This that is, is our sun-dried tomato Parmesan garlic. Wonderful. Okay. And then this, uh, I'm really proud of. This is a uh, varietal, which is a non-infused, non-flavored oil. This one comes from Arizona. It is what we call our Manitoba yeah. Reserve. It's got a very buttery note to it right. at the end. And then if you feel on the back of your throat, you'll notice there will be a little pepper sensation to yeah. it on the back. That's telling you you have a great extra virgin olive oil. You'll see a lot of places, you know, they'll say it's EVOO. You know, that's the acronym used for extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. It's very important to make sure where you're buying it and where it's coming from. I've been to this grove. I've gone through the mills and gone through the process of how they made it. I've watched them make it. So I know exactly where it is and I can stand by these products, which is wonderful. It's almost like you're buying f a fine wine. It actually is, <laughs> and that is the funny thing about olives. Um, throughout the world, olives are grown, and every one you can have the same olive grown in a different country, different region, and it's just like a grape. It pulls up things from the soil, and it gives it a different flavor. All so different olives in different parts of the world mm -hmm. taste the olive oil tastes different. Correct, correct. Now, next to you on uh, the next one down here, mm -hmm. this is our traditional balsamic vinegar. Um, you'll the true 18-year traditionals, which everyone talks about, come from uh, Medina, mm. and it is a, it's a wonderful aged balsamic vinegar. That's where these balsamics really come good. from. They're, they're grown in the traditional way or, or processed in the traditional way. All balsamics yeah. are made from white grape. It's, a, uh, it's in a region, mid-central uh, Italy, mm -hmm. and that's where all the high-quality balsamics come from. And as I tell everybody, it's buyer beware. You can go in the grocery store and find a big bottle of balsamic, and you're going to get what you pay for. It's going to be, you know, rather okay. watered down. Uh -huh. And ours are very thick, and ours are aged out for 10 to 12 years. 10 to 12 years age. 10 mm -hmm. to 12 years. 10 to 12 why, years. Why does that make a difference? Balsamics, vinegars get better with age. Um, the, it's just like a wine, just like you said. And the longer they're aged in oak, uh, or they can be cherry wood, it can be aged in ca whatever cast they use, mm -hmm. you, it draws out more flavors. The real, true, wonderful yes. balsamics are 18, 25, and 50 year. And, and they'll cost you, on an 18 year, it'll cost you $120 a bottle for a three ounce bottle. Wow. Of, uh, that, of a real incredible. pure 18 year aged. Um, the 25 and 50s go into the hundreds of dollars. Are you ever going to uh, offer or at least let people see the, the, uh, uh, balsamics at that, that level, do you think? I could, I could bring on in a balsamic at that level if there is a desire to have it. You know, right now the desire isn't quite there yet to Maybe get into something. Sh to show it. The chefs the... would actually probably like to have something like that. But use a dropper. You don't you pour it out like we do. You oh. would use a dropper on something aged that long. Oh, just drop. A couple, just drops. A couple little drops. And the fig notes and the, the uh, beautiful uh, grape notes that come out of that are just amazing. There's a huge difference between that and what everyone else mm -hmm, says. Mm -hmm. The and last this, one here, okay. this is a favorite of mine for the summertime. This is our white, it's a 12 year old white strawberry peach. Mm. That has been a favorite in the White Bear area. This is really, yeah, this one is really good. I think it's my favorite one. Yep, it's very refreshing. Uh, it's wonderful to use on a spinach salad with shaved almonds and some blue cheese crumbled in there. And Would you use this just like a, a, a salad dressing you then? use it just like a salad dressing. Wow. You wouldn't have to mix it with anything. You can just mix it right on in. A few extra strawberries or over a fruit. We're um, at our shop for Market Fest. Yep. We've been doing different uh, cakes using our olive oils, flavored olive oils, and our balsamics reduced down, pouring over as a drizzle, as a glaze on it. Uh -huh. And people are just uh, swinging on through and having a wonderful time sampling those. So you have, and then how many of these different, um, uh, these are olive, these are different oils, right? The, the balsamics? Oh, right, yes. The balsamics, I carry 18 varieties. Okay. So 18 different flavored balsamics, and on the oils we carry 22 different varieties okay. of olive oils. And again, again, I just want to separate this, the balsamics from the oils. The oils are essentially used for what then? They would be used oils for? Oils can be used for cooking. Okay. They can be used for dipping, used right. in salads. You know, Do you use an oil like a salad dressing? Or? Yes, you can. Our you can. oils, the reason why you can, you can use a cooking or as a, yeah. as a salad dressing because our oils are extremely low in acidity. 
Okay. And that's the one thing that makes a great olive oil. When you, when you have an olive oil and it has an acidity of 0.8 or less, um, you're not going to have a bitterness to the back of yeah. the, the throat. And some people will go and they'll buy oils from, um, from the grocery store, let's sure. say. And they don't know where they're getting it from. They'll say a product of Italy, but not all oils that are products of Italy are made in Italy. Uh, they're made from all over and brought to Italy and then shipped to the U.S. So I don't carry an Italian olive oil currently because I haven't found one that really I know comes from truly, Italy. Comes truly from Italy. I'm yeah. very careful about what I bring in. The oils that we bring in, I bring in. Uh, I have one from Morocco, which is the base of all of our flavored oils. Yeah. I have a Greek. I have a Spanish. I have an organic out of California, and I have two from Arizona. And these are just straight oils. Of the balance of our oils that we have, the other 18, those are all infused, and they're infused with our Moroccan olive oil. And mm -hmm. the reason why we use that oil is it's very low in acidity. It's got a 0.1 or less on its on its acidity level. Is Morocco then would be that be considered one of the top areas in the world for for a very low acidic, wonderfully flavored olive oil? And and we've tasted it around. That's where we found you know traveling through Europe is where we found our love for olive oil. That'd be, that'd be a nice way to travel to find, uh, open up a business to check out the olive oil and different. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's not a bad way to find out how to do it. Right, right. And then you get a little bit whatever. But, you know, this is really, these are really, really good. Now, this is. Um, this is Minnesota wild honey. Oh, okay. Um, we, we, it's raw honey. And one of the things about honey that, that, um, that we bring on into our store. Yeah. Uh, raw honey is, is is met with bees in the area, and you find that it's it's a little golden in color. It's got uh, pollens that are made from bees in this area, and it helps children that are that are allergic or have allergic reactions helps build that immunity, because the pollen is actually in the honey itself from local bees from local oh. plants that would cause allergies. Could help somebody that has allergies or hay fever. Mm -hmm. then. It does. It helps. It helps build their immunity to maybe have a little less effect of of okay. uh, their allergy. Wow. And does it taste different than the regular honey that no, you buy? No, it's still that wonderful, sweet, loving taste of honey. You still have, there isn't, there's more of a richness, I think, when it's raw honey uh -huh. than, than when it is a processed honey. I didn't even know there was a difference between. Oh, there are. There, I there, thought, we have some great honey, I thought honey was honey, but. No, uh, we have some great beekeepers in, in the Minnesota area. Oh, it's interesting. Wow. And so you sell this too that in your store. Uh, yes, we do. Wild, uh, wild honey, and unprocessed honey. Excellent, excellent. And and these are olives. These are all olives. Uh, we bring these up from Arizona. Tell me a little bit about these olives. The olives come from Queen Creek uh, in Arizona. It's okay. a wonderful Phoenix area uh, olive grove. Visited down there last year and found they they are a single source olive grove, which means no other olives are brought in or produced with their oils. Um, they, they do, they follow as, as close to as any uh -huh. orga organic farm can in Arizona. Uh, they're not certified organic because in, in Arizona you have to be within, uh, away from 30 miles from any farm that uses pesticides. Really? It's that far. But they follow all the rules of an organic. Everything is used on the farm and put back into wow. the farm. So nothing is brought in chemically wise to, to enhance everything. Wow, that, that's really incredible. Do you have any specialties that you would recommend that people would use with uh, these types of olives? Martinis. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we, all right. Uh, we're amazed. Now people will come on in and they're, they're opening up olives, they're buying a jar of olives and they're eating them right out of the, the jar, yeah, walking yeah. out of the store. Right. People love olives. You know, it's, it's just one of those savory mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. that's always nice to have. But okay. yeah, they, they take them on home and uh, I've been told that uh, the martinis are, are building up pretty fast in White Bear Okay, all right. Well, that's good. That's great to hear. Now, I want to just ask you a couple of questions here before we uh, conclude our interview uh, about about different food items again. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to kind of give your recommendation on some things. Somebody's going to grill a, 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 a couple of steaks. What would you, and, and then they come to your 
your uh, business. What, what, what might you can tell them to consider if they are going to do something like that for uh, something to put on top of the steak while they're grilling it? Sure. Besides the normal rubs that we carry in the seasonings, yeah. um, a wonderful thing to use on steaks is our balsamics. Vinegars uh -huh. act as a tenderizer. So our traditional or even like an espresso flavored uh -huh. brushed on over a steak in the last few minutes yeah. will glaze it and give it that sealed off sweet kind of crunchy glaze on top of a steak. Okay. And it's wonderful. You can, we'll take like that strawberry peach on yep. the end and you can marinate your chicken in that. Oh, wow. And that's so the next thing I was going to ask yeah. you is about chicken. So yeah. like if I was going to grill chicken, I could use that and marinate the chicken in before I put it on the grill then. Absolutely. We wow. have we have for oils, we have both an orange, a blood orange, and a lime, uh -huh. and a lemon olive oil, which yep. all go well with fish. And you can just grill your fish using yeah. our oils, and it gives it that nice wow. lemony or orange flavor that's to great. it. That's great. That's great. Now, if anybody wants to get a hold of you, what, uh, what, what's your phone number and do you have a uh, email address and or a website? We do. Uh, website's being built, but you can email us at shops at theolivebranchmn.com. Okay. And our phone number is 651-653-2207. Wonderful. Well, I really appreciate this uh, interview. It was very enlightening. And again, this is uh, Tom Snell from the uh, White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit www.whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.